The Lord be with you. Thank you for joining me today on Monday, August the 15th. Monday, August the 15th, as we begin a new book of the Bible, 1st and 2nd Kings. On this 15th day of August, you have your new word and prayer um, sheet for the week with the prayers of the church on the back for August the 15th through the 20th. And then, of course, the monthly Pray For Us calendar. Today, the 15th, we'll be praying for giving thanks to God for the blessings that God gives to his full-time church workers. <clears throat> Again, we begin 1 Kings. Uh, these readings will be a little longer since, of course, 1 and 2 Kings is a little bit longer. So today we'll have three chapters, chapters 1 through 3. So let us hear God's word together on this Monday the 15th and pray together. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Hear the word of the Lord from 1 Kings, the first chapter, verses 1 through 4, entitled, David in His Old Age. Now King David was old and advanced in years, and although they covered him with clothes, he could not get warm. Therefore his servant said to him, Let a young woman be sought for my lord the king, and let her wait on the king and be in his service. Let her lie in your arms, that my lord the king may be warm. So they sought for a beautiful young woman throughout all the territory of Israel, and found Abishag the Shinnamite, and brought her to the king. The young woman was very beautiful, and she was of service to the king and attended to him, but the king knew her not. So far the word of the Lord. The opening of 1 Kings is the account of the last days of King David. The conclusion of David's great reign and epic life reminds us of the mortality of all people. For all are sinners and all must die. Yet through the Messiah, great David's greater son, we all have hope and confidence beyond this life into the glories of heaven. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us the inspired, inerrant, and author authoritative books of Holy Scripture. Guide us as we read your word to find therein your priceless promises through the Messiah, in whose name we pray. Amen. We continue in 1 Kings, verses 5 through 10, entitled, Adonijahai Sets Himself Up as King. Now Adonijahai, the son of Haggith, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared for himself chariots and horsemen, and fifty men to run before him. His father had never at any time displeased him by asking, Why have you done thus and so? He was also a very handsome man, and he was born next after Absalom. He conferred with Joab, the son of Zerai, and with Abathar, the priest, and they followed Adonijah and helped him. But Zadok, the priest, and Benahah, the son of Jehoiada, and Nathan, the prophet, and Shimei and Ray, and David's mighty men, were not with Adonijah. Adonijah sacrificed sheep, oxen, and fattened calf by the serpent stone, which is beside Enrogel. And he invited all his brothers, the king's sons, and all the royal office officials of Judah. But he did not invite Nathan the prophet, or Benahi, or the mighty men, or Solomon his brother. So far the word of the Lord. Even before David's death, the rivalry between two of his sons develops. As Adonahai prepared to take over the reign, sin and greed lead to dissension. That certainly has not changed. How ugly to witness family rivalry over inheritance, which is precisely the matter here, especially addressed by the ninth commandment. We pray that your family avoids such temptations and plans well for peace. Because of Christ, we are able to forgive one another and live peaceably in his generous heritage of grace. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, help me from jealousy and strife. Lead me to trust your will for my life. In the Savior's name, I pray. Amen. 
We continue in 1 Kings, the first chapters, verses 11 through 27, entitled Nathan and Bathsheba before David. Then Nathan said to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, Have you not heard that Adonjahai, the son of Haggath, has become king, and David our Lord does not know it? Now therefore come, let me give you advice, that you may save your own life and the life of your son Solomon. Go in at once to King David and say to him, Did you not, my lord the king, swear to your servant, saying, Solomon, your son, shall reign after me, and he shall sit on my throne? Why then is Adonjahai king? Then while you are still speaking with the king, I also will come in after you and confirm your words. So Bathsheba went to the king in his chamber. Now the king was very old, and Abishag the Shunammite was attending to the king. Bathsheba bowed and paid homage to the king, and the king said, What do you desire? She said to him, My lord, you swore to your servant by the Lord your God, saying, Solomon, your son, shall reign after me, and he shall sit on my throne. And now, behold, Adonjahai is king, although you, my lord, the king, do not know it. He has sacrificed oxen, fattened cattle, and sheep in abundance, and has invited all the sons of the king, Abathar the priest, and Joab the commander of the army, but Solomon, your servant, he has not invited. And now, my lord, the king, the eyes of all Israel are on you to tell them who shall sit on the throne of my lord, the king, after him. Otherwise it will come to pass, when my lord, the king, sleeps with his fathers, that I and my son Solomon will be counted offenders. While she was still speaking with the king, Nathan the prophet came in. And they told the king, Here is Nathan the prophet. And when he came in before the king, he bowed before the king with his face to the ground. And Nathan said, My lord the king, have you said, Adonjahai shall reign after me, and he shall sit on my throne? For he has gone down this day and has sacrificed oxen, fattened cattle, and sheep in abundance, and has invited all the king's sons the commanders of the army, and Abathar the priest. And behold, they are eating and drinking before him, and saying, Long live, long live King Adajahai, but me, your servant, and Zadok the priest, and Benahai the son of Jehoiada, and your servant Solomon he has not invited. Has this thing been brought about by my lord the king, and you have not told your servants who should sit on the throne of my lord the king after him? So far the word of the Lord. Intrigue increases with word of Adonjahai's maneuvers to gain the throne. Nathan shows proper reserve, stating facts and asking the king what his intentions are. When stakes are high, we may feel, feel the urgency to rob others of their decisions. However, God would have us honor and our calling by others by assisting them with facts and with good counsel. The word of his prophets is ever ready to counsel and encourage us in the way of peace, blessed in the way of everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty God, our times are in your hands. Let us to use our time on earth wisely as we live for him who died for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue in 1 Kings, the first chapter, verses 28 through 53, entitled, Solomon Anointed King. Then King David answered, Call Bathsheba to me. So she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. And the king swore, saying, As the Lord lives, you has redeemed my soul out of every adversity. As I swore to you by the Lord, the God of Israel, saying, Solomon, your son shall reign after me, and he shall sit on my throne in my place, even so will I do this day. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the ground and paid homage to the king and said, May my lord King David live forever. King David said, Call to me Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benahi the son of Jehada. So they came before the king, and the king said to them, Take with you the servants of your lord, and have Solomon my son ride on my own mule, and bring him down to Gihon. And let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet there anoint him king over Israel. Then blow the trumpet and say, Long live King Solomon. You shall then come up after him, and he shall come and sit upon my throne, for he shall be king in my place. And I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel and over Judah. 
And ben and Benaha the son of Jehoiada answered the king, Amen. May the Lord, the God of my lord the king, say so. As the Lord has been with my lord the king, even so may he be with Solomon, and make his throne greater than the throne of my lord King David. So Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaha the son of Jehoiada, and the Cherethites, and the Pelethites went down and had Solomon ride on King David's mule and brought him to Gihon. There Zadok the priest took the horn of oil from the tent and anointed Solomon. Then they blew the trumpet and all the people said, Long live King Solomon! And all the people went up after him, playing on pipes and rejoicing with great joy, so that the earth was split by their noise. Adonjahai and all the guests who were with him heard it as they finished feasting. And when Joab heard the sound of the trumpet, he said, What does this uproar in the city mean? While he was still speaking, behold, Jonathan, the son of Abathar, the priest, came. And Adonjahai said, Come in, for you are a worthy man, and bring good news. Jonathan answered, Adonjahai, No, for our lord King David has made Solomon king. And the king has sent with him Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaha the son of Jehoiada, and the Cherethites, and the Pelethites. And they had him ride on the king's mule. And Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet have anointed him king at Gihon, and they have gone up from their rejoicing so that the city is in an uproar. This is the noise that you have heard. Solomon sits on the royal throne. Moreover, the king's servants came to congratulate our lord King David, saying, May your God make the name of Solomon more famous than yours, and make this throne greater than your throne. And the king bowed himself on the bed, and the king also said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has granted someone to sit on my throne this day, my own eyes seeing it. Then all the guests of Adonjahai trembled and rose, and each went his own way. And Adonjahai feared Solomon. So he arose and went and took hold of the horns of the altar. Then it was told Solomon, Behold, Adonjahai fears King Solomon, for behold, he has laid hold of the horns of the altar, saying, Let King Solomon swear to me first that he will not put his servant to death with the sword. And Solomon said, If he will show himself a worthy man, not one of his hairs shall fall to the earth. But if wickedness is found in him, he shall die. So King Solomon sent, and they brought him down from the altar. And he came and paid homage to King Solomon. And Solomon said to him, Go to your house. So far the word of the Lord. Informed of Adonjahai's intention, David declares that Solomon is to succeed him as king according to God's purposes. Human scheming cannot overthrow God's plans. This is a warning to all who think that they can defy the Almighty, but it is also a great comfort to us whose lives and futures are in the hands of our merciful and graceful God. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, I thank you for your guidance of my life, assuring me that in your Son Jesus you are reigning for my good, both now and eternally. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue in chapter 2, verses 1 through 9, entitled, David's Instructions to Solomon. When David's time to die drew near, he commanded Solomon his son, saying, I am about to go the way of all the earth. Be strong and show yourself a man and keep the charge of the Lord your God, walking in his ways and keeping his statutes, his commandments, his rules, and his testimonies. As it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn that the Lord may establish his word that he spoke concerning me, saying, If your sons pay close attention to their way, to walk before me in faithfulness with all their heart and with all their soul, you shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. Moreover, you, all, you also know what Joab the son of Zerah did to me, how he dealt with the two commanders of the armies of Israel, Abner the son of Ner, and Amasa the son of Jether, whom he killed, avenging in time of peace for blood that had been shed in a war, and putting the blood of war on the belt around his waist and on the sandals on his feet. Act, therefore, according to your wisdom, but do not let his gray head go down to Sheol in peace. But deal loyally with the sons of Barzillia the Gileadite, and let them be among those who eat at your table. 
for with such loyalty they met me when I fled from Absalom, your brother. And there is also with you Shema, the son of Gera, the Benjaminite, from Bahiram, who cursed me with a grievous curse on the day when I went to Man Mahanam. But when he came down to meet me at the Jordan, I swore to him by the Lord, saying, I will not put you to death with the sword. Now therefore do not hold him guiltless, for you are a wise man. You will know what you ought to do to him. You shall bring his gray head down with blood to Sheol. So far the word of the Lord. Before dying, King David charges his son Solomon with the responsibilities of kingship. He rightly commends God's word as the basis of all good judgment and leadership. David's dying example of concern for his son Solomon and the kingdom over which he would reign encourages us in Christ-like love and service to our families. In his death, Christ has supplied fully for our life and peaceably served in his kingdom. Let us pray. O oh, Father in heaven, through life and in the hour of death, keep my eyes set on my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. First Kings, the second chapter, verses 10 through 12, entitled, The Death of David. Then David slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. And the time that David reigned over Israel was 40 years. He reigned seven years in Hebron and 33 years in Jerusalem. So Solomon sat on the throne of David, his father, and his kingdom was firmly established. So far the word. The Bible reminds us that even great kings are mortal and die. Scripture's use of the term sleep for death, especially when applied to believers, is a wonderful reminder that we shall awaken from death to life with God in heaven through the sufferings, through the death, and through the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O oh God of our fathers, we thank you for all your blessings that you daily and richly shower upon us with goodness through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue in 1 Kings, the second chapter, verse, beginning at verse 13, entitled, Solomon's Reign Established. Then Adajahai, the son of Haggath, came to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, and she said, Do you come peacefully? He said, Peacefully. Then he said, I have something to say to you. She said, Speak. He said, You know that the kingdom was mine and that all Israel fully expected me to reign. However, the kingdom has turned about and become my brother's, for it was his from the Lord. And now I have one request to make of you. Do not refuse me. She said to him, Speak. And he said, Please ask King Solomon, he will not refuse you, to give me Abishag, the Shunammite, as my wife. Bathsheba said, Very well, I will speak for you to the king. So Bathsheba went to King Solomon. Bathsheba went to King Solomon to speak out to him on behalf of Adajahai. And the king rose to meet her and bowed down to her. Then he sat on his throne and had a seat brought for the king's mother, and she sat on his right. Then she said, I have one small request to make of you. Do not refuse me. And the king said to her, Make your request, my mother, for I will not refuse you. She said, Let Abishag the Sh Shinnamite be given to Adajahai, your brother, as his wife. King Solomon answered his mother, And why do you ask Abishag the Shunammite for Adajahai? Ask for him the kingdom also, for he is my older brother, and on his side are Abathar the priest and Joab the son of Zerah. Then King Solomon swore by the Lord, saying, God do so to me and more also, if this word does not cost Adajahai his life. Now therefore, as the Lord lives, who has established me and placed me on the throne of David my father, and who has made me a house, as he promised, Adajahai shall be put to death today. So King Solomon sent Benaha the son of Jehoiada, and he struck him down, and he died. And to Abathar the priest, the king said, Go to Anathath, to your estate, for you deserve death. But I will not at this time put you to death, because you carried the ark of the Lord God before David my father, and because you shared in all my father's afflictions. 
So Solomon expelled Abathar from being priest to the Lord, thus fulfilling the word of the Lord that he spoke, that he had spoken concerning the house of Eli in Shiloh. When the news came to Joab, for Joab had supported Adajahai, although he had not supported Absalom, Joab fled to the tent of the Lord and caught hold of the horns of the altar. And when it was told King Solomon, Joab had fled to the tent of the Lord, and behold, he is beside the altar. Solomon sent Benahah the son of Jehada, saying, Go, strike him down. So Benahah came to the tent of the Lord and said to him, The king commands, Come out. But he said, No, I will die here. Then Benahah brought the king word again, saying, Thus said Joab, and thus he answered me. The king replied to him, Do as he has said. Strike him down and bury him, and thus take away from me and from my father's house the guilt for the blood that Joab shed without cause. The Lord will bring back his bloody deeds on his own head. Because without the knowledge of my father David, he attacked and killed with the sword two men more righteous and better than himself, Abner, the son of Ner, commander of the army of Israel, and Amasa, the son of Jether, commander of the army of Judah. So shall their blood come back on the head of Joab and on the head of his descendants forever. But for David and for his descendants and for his house and for his throne, there shall be peace from the Lord forever. Then Benahah the son of Jehada went up and struck him down and put him to death. And he was buried in his own house in the wilderness. The king put Benahana the son of Jehada over the army in place of Joab. And the king put Zadok the priest in the place of Abathar. Then the king sent and summoned Shemai and said to him, Build yourself a house in Jerusalem and dwell there, and do not go out from there to any place whatever. For on the day you go out and cross the brook Kindred, know for certain that you shall die, your blood shall be on your own head. And Shemai said to the king, What you say is good, as my lord the king has said, so will your servant do. So Shimei lived in Jerusalem many days, but it happened at the end of three years that two of Shimei's servants ran away to Achish, son of Macha, king of Gath. And when it was told Shimei, behold, your servants are in Gath, Shimei arose and saddled a donkey and went to Gath, to Achish, to, sec to seek his servants. Shimei went and brought his servants from Gath. And when Solomon was told that Shimei had gone from Jerusalem to Gath and returned, the king sent and summoned Shimei and said to him, Did I not make you swear by the Lord and solemnly warn you, saying, Know for certain that on the day you will go out and go to any place, whatever, you shall die? And you said to me, What you say is good, I will obey. Why then have you not kept your oath to the Lord and the commandment with which I commanded you? The king also said to Shimei, You know in your own heart all the harm that you did to David, my father. So the Lord will bring back your harm on your own head. But King Solomon shall be blessed, and the throne of David shall be established before the Lord forever. Then the king commanded Benahah the son of Jehada, and he went out and struck him down, and he died. So the kingdom was established in the hand of Solomon. So far the word of the Lord. Though a man of peace, Solomon oversees the deaths of his political enemies. Scripture does not, does not absolutely approve of Solomon's motives in these cases, but does affirm his right and his responsibility to govern. God wants us to respect the earthly government under which we live, recognizing that we serve a higher king and are citizens of an everlasting kingdom that of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Let me be thine forever, my faithful God and Lord. Let me forsake thee never, nor wander from thy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue in 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 1 through 15, entitled Solomon's Prayer for Wisdom. Solomon made a marriage alliance with Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had finished building his own house in the house of the Lord in the wall around Jerusalem. The people were sacrificing at the high places, however, because no house had yet been built for the name of the Lord. Solomon loved the Lord 
walking in the statutes of David his father, only he sacrificed and made offerings at the high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, You have shown me great and steadfast love to your servant, David my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept him this great and steadfast, and you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in a place of David my father, although I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For you, for who is able to govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this, and God said to him, Because you have asked this, I have not asked for yourself long life or riches or the life of your enemies, but I have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. Behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and a discerning mind, so that none like you who has been before you and none like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked both riches and honor, so that no other king shall compare with you all your days. And if you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Then he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings and made a feast for all his servants. So far the word of the Lord. In return for Solomon's selfless request for wisdom, God blesses him, not only with wisdom, but also with riches and honor. May we, like Solomon, recognize that we do not deserve the wonderful opportunities that God gives us. Because of our human limitations, we are unable to perfectly fulfill the challenges we face. Yet in Christ, we have forgiveness. We are a new creation and can do all things through him who gives us strength and wisdom. Let us pray. O Lord God, do not forsake me in my life of service, lest I bring it all to ruin. May your word my constant companion be. Give me strength and wisdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We continue 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 16 through 28, entitled Solomon's Wisdom. Then two prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. The one woman said, O my Lord, this woman and I live in the same house. And I gave birth to a child while she was in the house. Then on the third day after I gave birth, this woman also gave birth, and we were alone. There was no one else with us in the house. Only we two were in the house. And this woman's son died in the night because she lay on him. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while your servant slept and laid him at her breast. And he laid her dead son at my breast. When I rose in the morning to nurse my child, behold, he was dead. But when I looked at him closely in the morning, behold, he was not the child that I had born. But the other woman said, No, the living child is mine and the dead child is yours. The first said, No, the dead child is yours and the living child is mine. Thus they spoke before the king. Then the king said, The one says, This is my son that is alive, and your son is dead. And the other says, No, but your son is dead, and my son is the living one. And the king said, Bring me a sword. So the sword was brought before the king. And the king said, Divide the living child in two, and give half to the one and half to the other. And the woman whose son was alive said to the king, Because her heart yearned for her son, O my lord, Give her the living child, and by no means put him to death. But the other said, He shall be neither mine nor yours. Divide him. Then the king answered and said, Give the living child to the first woman, and by no means put him to death. She is his mother. And all Israel heard of the judgment that the king had rendered, and they stood in awe of the king, because they perceived 
that the wisdom of the God, wisdom of God was in him to do justice. So far the word of the Lord. Solomon's legendary, legendary wisdom is evident in his dealing with the two prostitutes who claim to have given birth to the same living child. True wisdom consists of far more than acquiring facts and acquiring information. Rather, it is a godly wisdom to declare our sinfulness and our need for a savior to see in Jesus the one who meets all of our needs. Let us pray. Omniscient Lord, wisdom's highest treasure resides in your son, who is the very wisdom of God. Guide me constantly to serve you faithfully. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Having completed the readings for the day, we now continue in prayer, first using the Pray For Us calendar. On this 15th day of August, Lord, we give thankful hearts for the blessings that God gives to his people through full-time church workers. We pray that these faithful men and women who are in full-time church work continue to care for all people, pray for all people, and teach all people the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The weekly prayers of the church. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in the world, for unity and concord within the church, for harmony and patience and love within the family, and for all that, can, all that contribute to the common good, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For protection against acts of violence and terror, for just and fair laws, for good order and for all to enjoy safety in their homes and freedom from want, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For schools, colleges, universities, and every other place where people gather to teach and to learn, for the wisdom of God's word to guide our knowledge of his creation, and for the flourishing of all arts and music, science and technology to benefit all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O merciful Father, you have wounded your own Son to bring us the eternal healing of your love. Bless the sick and those who suffer, those wounded in body or mind, and those dying, and all those we now name to you in our hearts. In your own time, grant to them healing according to your will, and sustain them into the day of the resurrection of the body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, O Lord, and whatever else you know we need, we pray you to grant us for the sake of the mercies and by the merits of our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We are bold to pray together as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.